with no idea in what direction you are going? This is a reality for people who suffer from developmental topographical disorientation. Developmental topographical disorientation, also known as DTD, is characterized by a person's inability to orient his or herself in the environment usually due to an inability to form a cognitive map. A cognitive map is a mental representation of one's environment. It's like a custom Google Maps where areas that you travel often are more detailed by street or landmark or even personal memories. For example, the, on the Georgia Tech campus, students will have a more detailed cognitive map around buildings they've taken classes in. Those paths that they've traveled every day are strongly integrated into their cognitive map. Like, look over there, that's the sidewalk I always trip on. For DTD, patients have shown symptoms since childhood and do not show any cognitive impairment, i.e. they have normal intelligence and perception. In a paper published by Gestipe Iaria, a 43-year-old woman identified as PT who suffers from DTD was described. PT was initially evaluated using three types of navigational tests, route-based, landmark-based, and direction-based. She passed all tests without making any major errors. Although she was able to follow a path drawn on a map, she was unable to determine the shortest path between two points on the same map. Most indicative of her disorder was when she was asked to draw a map of her house. As you can see, many details are lacking as well as scaling and distances when PT's drawing is compared to her father's on the right. She was unable to locate any objects or landmarks in the rooms, although she knew that they were there. Nevertheless, she drew the correct number of rooms in her house and they were all at the correct location. Further testing, the researchers created a virtual environment that was highly controlled representation of a town square. There were several brick buildings and four distinct landmarks represented by images. PT was asked to explore the environment in a similar fashion as shown by this maze. She had to form a cognitive map to learn the environment. For the retrieval task, she was shown a schematic map of the environment from the top view perspective and asked to locate the four landmarks. She was also asked to navigate from one landmark to another using the shortest possible route. Initially, she failed at both tasks. During the retrieval test, activation of PT's hippocampus was significantly lower than that of the control when fMRI images were taken of her brain. After extensive training, one hour a week for six weeks, to become more familiar with the environment, PT's hippocampal activation reached that of the control group and she was able to form a cognitive map in five minutes. A feature of developmental topographical disorientation is the inability to create a mental representation of the environment, not necessarily to use it. Through extensive training, PT was able to form and use a cognitive map normally. This is an excellent example of neuroplasticity at work.